In this video, we're going to talk about factoring, which is basically the opposite of expanding things out, the opposite of foiling. And so here, uh, in expanding, you multiply things out to all the different terms, the distributive property. Here, this is the opposite of that. So you're going to divide instead of multiply and pull things out rather than expanding them out. So here, let's look at this first example. So here, out of these two terms, if we want to instead uh, factor it out, meaning pull something out, we got to basically divide. So we're going to ask ourselves, what's the largest thing that we can divide from both of these terms so that they're still whole numbers? So looking at this, now, the first thing to keep in mind is we're always going to think of the coefficient, meaning the number, versus the variable, like the x or the x squared. Uh, we're going to think about those separately. So first, let's just focus on the number, the coefficient that is. So in the first term, the coefficient is 15. And in the second term, the coefficient is 5. And so if we're asking ourselves, what's the largest number that we can divide from, from both of those and still get a whole number, that's like saying, what's the largest common factor? That's where you know factoring comes from. So here, uh, that's going to be 5. Because anytime one of them is a multiple of the other, it's, uh, it's fairly straightforward. But yeah, so here, if we divide both of these by 5, we're going to get a 3 for the first term and then just 1 for the second one, right? So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a 5. And this first term, essentially, again, I'm going to divide the coefficient by 5. So I'm left with 3. And the x can just stay as is. And here, I'm going to get just 1. And then the x squared can stay as is. Cool. Now I can think about uh, what can I do on the variable front. So this guy has an x, and this guy has an x squared. So the largest thing we could divide out is x. And dividing out an x here, we're going to have no variable left. It's just going to be 1, because x divided by x is 1. And here, x squared, which is basically x times x, right? And so if you divide out an x, you're left with one uh, an x. So I'm going to, in addition to this 5, I can also pull out the x. And then I'm left here with 3. And here, I'm left with just one of the x's, right? And there you go. So that's how you would factor. Now let's look at a, another example that looks more difficult than it is. So looking at this blue example right here, um, yeah, so that, that looks like a, a mess. It looks like there's like a lot of terms going on, and uh, it's unclear why this is a factoring question. Uh, in fact, there's like three variables. There's an x, a y, and a p. But if we think about it, the first thing we can ask ourselves is how many terms does this thing have? And when you look at it, this 4y is multiplied to this quantity. So that, that this is one term. And then this is another term. So this whole thing, the, the outermost layer of it, only has two terms. And then we can ask ourselves that same question. What is the largest thing we can divide in both terms uh, so that it's, uh, it's divisible, you know, it's uh, an integer left? So here, first again, let's break it down, coefficients and variables separately. So the coefficient here is 4, here is 5. Huh. There really isn't anything. There's no number. Those uh, those are you know relatively prime to each other. Meaning there's no common factors. So we can't really uh, do it. We can't really factor out any coefficient here. All right. Well, let's look at the variable front. This guy has a y. This guy doesn't have a y at all. So we can't really do anything with that. Similarly, this guy has an x. That guy doesn't x have an x, and so we can't really do anything on that front either. But this weird quantity p minus one. Technically, as a, as a quantity, both of these things have it. If I were to just take that first term and divide it by p minus 1, it would cancel out. Similarly, if I divided this guy by p minus 1, it would cancel out, and you'd just be left with the 5x. So long story short, when I factor out a p minus 1, in this first term, I'm left with just the 4y. And in the second term, I'm left with just the 5x. So there you have it. P minus 1 times 4y plus 5x would be your final answer here. All right. So that, that's factoring. But another type of factoring problem that you'll often see is something like this, quadratic factoring, as, as we'll call it. But essentially, the way to factor something like this, where there's an, a sort of squared term, a, a regular variable term, and then a constant term, right? So an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. Uh, the, the standard procedure for this, it's almost like a guess and check thing, is we're looking for 
what is uh, a set of numbers, two numbers, that multiply with each other to give us negative 14, but add up to each other to give us negative 5. So that's what we're looking for. So first, first let's just find that, that set of numbers. What are those two numbers? Uh, and then we'll, uh, you know, then, our, then we'll be able to easily find our final answer. So that, that seems like, how, how do we find that? Like, what's the process for finding that? I mean, two numbers that add up to negative five, there's infinitely many set of numbers that can add up to negative five, right? Uh, so, but the easier thing to do is negative 14. What are two numbers that multiply to give you negative 14, whole numbers? So, well, let's just try to list them out. Uh, let's see, I guess negative one and 14, right? That multiplies to give you negative 14. Negative two and seven, right? Uh, well, let's think, uh, but then also we have two and negative seven. And you could keep going like that, but usually you'll start seeing a trend pretty quickly. And uh, I mean, with 14, the only two, two uh, you know, things are two, seven, and one, 14, or, and positive, negative versions of it. But pretty quickly into it, we sort of found it, right? These two, two and negative seven, add up. Two plus negative seven is negative five. And they add up to give us negative five like we wanted. So there you go. So the two numbers that we were looking for here were two and negative seven, which means this whole thing can factor. And I'll, I'll just, uh, you, you could basically jump to the answer as, as you'll see in a sec of t x plus two, x minus seven. And just uh, to understand why that's the case, why that means that, and again, you don't need to do this every time. You could just, once you find those two numbers, you could jump to it. But out of curiosity, the reason that works is this. You could basically rewrite that negative 5x as, let's see, so we're going to rewrite that negative 5x as basically plus 2x minus 7x, right? Because 2x minus 7x, so again, all I did was I rewrote the negative 5x as 2x minus 7x, because that's negative 5x, and then what I do is, out of these two terms, I can factor out an x, right? So here I factor out an x, and I'm left with uh, x plus 2. Similarly, here in these two terms, I factor out a negative 7, and I'm left with an x plus 2. Because here in this negative 14, when you divide out by negative 7, you're left with positive 2. And finally, when you look at these two terms, they both have an x plus 2 in common. And when you factor out the x plus 2, you're left with just an x here and just a minus 7 here. So you have x minus 7. All right, so that, that's why. But again, you don't need to do that every time. That's just in case you were curious. But overall, that's, that's how you can factor a quadratic. Now, finally, you might have a problem like this, which almost it looks like you can't really do anything. You can't really factor that. But um, one, one sort of rule from expanding is this rule a plus b times a minus b. And that, that, that always, when you FOIL it out, FOILs out to be a squared minus b squared. So anytime you see something that's a perfect squared minus something else that's also a perfect squared, something should go off in your mind that if I needed to, I could always factor that as a plus b, a minus b. So looking at this, both of these things are perfect squares p to the fourth power, that's the same thing as p squared taken to the second power, right? So this is that, and 100 is 10 squared. So now that we have something squared minus something squared, well, this rule will tell us that that's just the first guy, which is p squared. Notice the first guy itself is p squared plus the second guy, so plus 10 and then p squared minus the second guy, minus 10. And again, you could verify, you could FOIL this out and you'd get the original thing. That's sort of the cool thing about factoring is you can always check your work because whatever you get at the end, you could just FOIL it out and people make a lot fewer mistakes on average while FOILing than while factoring. So, you know, assuming you do the, the FOILing right, you could then check your answer and make sure you get the original thing. And if so, you know you did the factoring correctly.